Welcome, everyone. All right, it's 12.03 on Monday. We're going to get started just in case we have some new folks here. My name's Travis Martin. Y'all can hear me okay, right? Yep, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Let me get this started. Uh, for our new folks, I'm Travis. I've lost over 100 pounds on the program. Glory to God. I've come off all prescription medications. The program's changed my life. It's my lifestyle. It's practical, sustainable, and fun. There's a lot of ways to lose, a lot of programs out there by which one can lose weight, but they better have this in common. If you're gonna lose weight healthfully and preserve muscle, you better be operating in a calorie deficit with high, where every calorie has a high level of nutrient, uh, nutrient, nutrient density in it, because you're taking in less calories. So those calories better be real nutrient dense calories. Gotta operate in a calorie deficit and you've gotta control insulin. If a program doesn't encompass all that, or a program's eliminating a macronutrient, say a no fat or no carbs or no protein, bad. You know, that might work for the short while. It's okay to eliminate a macronutrient uh, during a, a fasting campaign, but if you're trying to live a lifestyle where you neglect to consume all of the macronutrients, you're just setting yourself up for failure too. You need a program that is really uh, all encompassing, that encompasses everything that you're gonna need uh, to know no matter where you're at. I call it situational nutrition, whether you're at a fast food restaurant, a family style restaurant, your granny's at home, at work, driving a truck, you need to know what to do so that you can combine foods the right way and control insulin, and that is what we teach. Now, a lot of people know what to do, but they struggle doing what they know. And a lot of that has to do with this thing right here. So let me ask this question and we'll, we'll let you all ask me questions during this lunch and learn. So let me ask everybody this question and you may not want to answer. Some of you may be vulnerable and, and be okay with, uh, with answer. Has anybody had a rough day or two and today you're having a tough time getting centered? You're, you're having a, it's Monday, you know you should be focused and you're already having a tough time with that focus. Anyone? And then I might add a secondary question. Is this seem to be a, 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 a repetitive thing that you deal with where you want to do it, but you just can't get focused? Why do you think that is? Why, why do you think that is? You want it so bad, you want to feel better. You want to get the weight off. You want to have more confidence, more self-esteem, more drive. But every time you get ready and you would get started, something gets in your way. Either life gets in your way, uh, there's some mental roadblock, some family matter, always something, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's called, and we made some folks mad over the weekend, I said, it's a lack of love. You don't have a food problem. You got a love problem. How many of you have many competing voices in your head even this day? Should do, shouldn't do, right, wrong. Lots of competing voices, lots of, uh, lots of spirits, lots of ideas just constantly bombarding you. You should eat this way. No, that's wrong. You should eat this way. Uh, your child's uh, upset. They're, they had a breakup with a boyfriend and they're having a breakdown. You can't think about you right now. And uh, what are we going to do if, uh, if the world keeps going in the direction it is? All the news is bad. Oh, no. Russia, Ukraine, all this stuff is constant. I might lose my job. Uh, there's always something, right? Always something. So how are you going to navigate this? Because you know you can. There are some people doing it, right, Sheila? There are some people that's doing it. Despite all of life's problems and stumbling blocks, they're doing it. How do they do that? Well, they center themselves. How many of you have a, a, a center, a way that you center yourself? Let's say it in a different way. Recalibrate. You, you know, even instrumentation, even uh, things that we utilize, artisans utilize to, to work on to, to make things, to work on things, machinery, equipment. You have to recalibrate it from time to time, right? So if we've got all this bombardment of things in this world coming at us, and 
And, and it's getting worse, right? Because we keep gaining weight. And we know that the leading cause of all premature death in our country is obesity. And every time I go to the doctor, I'm getting a bad report. They put me on more meds or I started to reduce those meds. And now I've gotten off track and I'm gaining weight again. They're going to put me back on the meds. It's madness. So when will you start a daily ritual of self-love and self-care? And it starts in the mind. So what we're contending with here is your spirit, your mind, and your body. I will submit to you that every one of you has a ready, willing, and able spirit. Right? How many of you, your spirit is ready and willing to lose weight? Your spirit. I didn't say your mind or body. Your spirit. Now, it's your spirit that should be leading the charge. It is your spirit that should be in charge. But it's like we let our mind and bodies, we let our mind and bodies, we, we allow them to step in a leadership role. Yes or no? Yes or no? We allow our minds and our bodies, it's, like, it's almost like letting the inmates run the asylum. Can I get an amen there? Maybe I'm just talking to me. It's like sometimes I let the inmates run the asylum. And I'm crazy. It gets crazy in this noggin of mine. My mind and my body are the inmates running the asylum. My spirit is sitting there going, are you ever going to let me back in charge? How many of you want to let your spirit back in charge just for today? Anybody join me in my ritual? Let's, let's, let's let our spirit, now here's what the spirit will do. My spirit knows who's got the keys to my success, the Holy Ghost. So my spirit is about to get my mind and my body in sync with the spirit, and then my spirit is going to start walking in step with the Holy Spirit, and we're all going to be happy, even the inmates in the asylum. So for those of you that can, even if you can't do it out loud, I want you to try something for just a minute. And then let me know, honestly, if, you, if you're willing to give it a real try. If you're not, if you're just going to be a Debbie Downer and you're not going to give it a real try, I shouldn't have said Debbie, we got Debbie's here. If you're just going to be a downer and not really try just so that you can, you can play the, the negative person, then don't even, don't even uh, exercise this ritual. But I want you to try something. I want you to try to silence your mind. Let's, let's now, let's remove the carnality. Let's remove the carnal mind for a minute. And let's put on this, this mind that was also in Christ Jesus. Are y'all ready to do it? It's real simple. Watch what happens for those of you that really try it'll be hard because you got a lot coming at you you know life family work problems all right let's just try for a minute so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this try out loud if you can if you can't just do it in your head but try to silence all other evil spirits all the fear judgment regret all the things you're concerned about stop it i am loving awareness can you say that three or four times if you can out loud I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am. See, when you're saying that, can't nothing else get in there. I am loving awareness. What does that mean to me? Well, the guy that taught me that says that that means I love everything that I'm aware of. There's some things I'm not aware of, but everything I'm aware of, I love. I am loving awareness. I love everything and everyone that I'm aware of. I love my body, so I need to take care of my body. I love my mind, so I need to take care of my mind and monitor the things that I let in my mind, and then I, I need to monitor the powerful words that I say. They need to be powerful and positive because I love my mind. I love my mind. I love my body. I love you. And I love God. Now let's try it again. I am loving awareness. I love God. I love everything I'm aware of. I love my body. 
I'm going to treat my body right. I love my mind. I'm going to treat my mind right. I am not God. I can't control everything around me. All I can do is be loving awareness. And I love you all. I love everybody here that I'm aware of that is here. Y'all, are you with me? Now try that for just a minute or two and then let me know. Do you feel a little more positive? Once you start saying and believing, I love my body, are you going to put as much junk in your body? That's the question. I love my body. It's not that my body's working against me. I'm not going to abuse my body instead of, you know, somebody told me uh, recently, said, my darn old body, it just won't lose weight. Well, no wonder you're mean to it. <laughs> you're mean to it. I love my body. I'm dealing with some pain. I love that pain. It's okay. It's telling me that this side of my body needs some rehab. I need to give it some love. We're going to love our bodies. We're going to love our mind. We're going to love our life. If, if we give in to this fear-based, hate-filled world, you can forget ever losing weight. And most people have, so much so they're trying to normalize being obese so that people can just accept it and walk therein. I'm not going to do it. I am loving awareness. I love myself. I love my mind. I love my body. I love my God. And I love you all. Now, if I do that, every time I feel the inmates getting loose, all my spirits got to do is show up and say, no, 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 y'all settle down. This is not a sound mind. I love my mind. My mind is sound. I'm going to put this mind that was also in Christ Jesus in my mind. I am love. I am joy. I am discipline. If we don't start talking to ourselves, right? Here's what happens. How many of you have listened to people and you know their problem by the words they're saying, right? Because they're just all over the place. It's just all bad. It's all bad. It all sucks. Life stinks. My life is falling apart. Is that a sound mind? When you've got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, at least one person that loves you and cares about you, think about all this. Why are we not the happiest, most joyful people on the planet Earth, the household of faith, and fit and happy and healthy and enjoying food for celebratory reasons and other days living with Holy Spirit self-discipline? I am loving awareness. I love everything and everyone that I'm aware of because I'm imitating my hero, Jesus. I love my mind. I love my body. I love you. I love God. Why can't we do that? Is that so hard? What did that cost, cost any of us this morning? That's my monologue. I've been doing it all morning. I love everything I'm aware of. I love myself. I love my members. I love my family. I'm not God. I can't solve all their problems, and I'm not going to try to. This is opportunities for my family to reach out to Jesus and to exercise their faith. Daddy can't solve all their problems. And I can go on and on. But my point is, I'm loving awareness. And that helps me get control of my mind and my body. I hope that helps today. All right, so let's turn this over to Q&A Q Q &A time. Any questions about the program? Anything? Now, again, the things that I told you today, they don't work unless you work them. Unless you actually go through those exercises on a daily basis of recentering and recalibrating in your mantras may be something else that you use to get yourself in line, in alignment with the Holy Spirit. That's you. We all have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. But I have an obligation to tell you the things that I do to keep my mind and body in check. And that's what I've tried to do today. Any questions? Questions or comments? Somebody said they had questions earlier. I think I've got my first one. It's a private one. I have completed my 100,000 steps and exercises, but today I have a label of sugar britches. Why? Well, I don't know without going into your account. You may have checked off an exercise challenge. You'll have to go back and look at today's date or the day before and check and see if in the exercise section there you'll see a little, little tiny button there. 
And if you marked that button in the exercise challenges and you didn't get 10,000 steps and log your exercises and have a perfect day, then it will give you the Sugar Britches badge. What I, since this is a private question, I won't call your name. What I would do is send an email to info at myshaboleth.com. You either got that for tapping out of a challenge uh, accidentally, it sounds like, or um, you didn't mark a perfect day, have 10,000 steps and at least 100 repetitions of exercise to get your sugar riches. Nobody gets that badge unless they mark that they were uh, engaging in a personal challenge. And uh, that when you don't do all or meet all that criteria, it will give you that badge. But once you go back in there and you clear that up and you say, oh, I did get my 100 reps, I did get uh, all my walking in, you make sure all that's right, then that badge will go away and you'll get your soldier badge or better. So if you're struggling with that, send an email to info at myshaboleth.com. And then once you know, you'll know forever how to do that. Hope that helps. You liking the step challenge and the fasting? Good deal. I love the step challenge. I'm back doing it this week. Started a new 100,000 step challenge this week while subscribing to a meal plan. All right, some more questions. Somebody says, I'm feeling acceptance now. Good. You need to. You need to love and accept yourself. Awesome job. It's harder work than people realize love and self acceptance. Uh, Christy, I signed up for the step and detox challenge, but I didn't get the detox advocate kit. I can still do the detox, right? You sure can. You may or may not get as good a results because you're not getting that. You may not, you may or may not be getting enough insoluble fiber. Uh, and those herbal tablets and the probiotic restore is certainly going to help your body give it a little push in the right direction with detoxification. But if you just want to do the detox meal plan, you can do that without the supplement kit. Sure. Absolutely. Pam's bragging on my steps from last week. I think I had about 180,000 last week. I really worked hard. Thank you for recognizing me, Pam. And I appreciate your hard work in the step challenge too, my friend. Next question. If I don't get in all 100,000 steps in seven days, can I add one more day or do I just not pass the challenge? Um, that's a good question. It is a seven day challenge. I'll leave that up to you. We don't want you to ever find an excuse or reason to, to quit doing what you set out to do. I think I would probably personally try to finish my 100,000 steps before embarking on a new challenge. Um, but I'm going to leave that up to you personally. You know, I like if I say I'm going to do it, I like to do it unless, uh, you know, I've got an injury or there's some real reason that I can't finish something that I started. So, Lisa, if you didn't get your 100,000, I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, as to whether you want to say you passed or didn't pass, uh, but I, I I would just finish what I started. That's what I would do. If it takes you longer than seven days, it takes you longer. But the idea is we want to we want to really push towards getting a hundred thousand steps in a week. And if some of us are not going to be able to do that because we haven't stepped in a long time. We ha we've got a deconditioned body. That's okay. We love our bodies. We're not trying to kill our bodies. And it's real hard to go from 1,000 steps a day to 10,000 a day. But we're trying to work towards more than 10,000 a day, trying to get that 100,000 steps. So I'm going to leave that up to you. It's on the honor system anyway. Whatever your heart's feeling, you know if you did your best or not. I tell people for the fun of the challenge, if you know you didn't do your best, then you admit to yourself and to your Shibboleth members by tapping out that you didn't do your best. But next time, do your best. If you know you did do your best, hey, that's all we're asking for here. You're not really competing with anybody but yourself. Nelly says, I need prayers. It's been hard to get back on the shibby world. Yep, life gets in the way of all of us. We've all got choices to make each and every day. And I, I had to be the first to tell you, uh, over the years, I've made a lot of bad choices. And you know, when I would say that I just can't lose weight. No, that's not true. I just didn't want to. I wanted something else worse than I wanted to be healthy. So, Nellie, I know it's really hard because we've got these competing ideas. You know, uh, on one hand, we, we don't really want to have to spend the time planning any meals or 
We don't want to have to spend the time thinking about what we eat or how we combine them. And then on one hand, we're like, I really want to lose the weight, though. See, we can't have it both ways. So how do I get motivated to do what I'm supposed to do? I am loving awareness. You've got to have these rituals and these things. You've got to build your why. Uh, Nelly, you may have to rebuild your why and your purpose. What is your real reason for doing this? See, we're human beings. Our words and thoughts are very powerful. We can talk ourselves into something or we can talk ourselves out of something. And what we end up seeing a lot here on Planet Shibola is folks that are trying to talk themselves into losing weight and are also trying to talk themselves into eating what they want when they want as much as they want. So it, you've got to decide. Everybody here, we've got a, an adult decision to make. We've got to inherit the kingdom of heaven as a little child, but we've got adult decisions to make. What do we want to do? Why do we want to do it? Why am I not excited about taking care of myself? Spend some time with the written, uh, writing down like I do. Like, for example, I've got a kid that one of, one of my kids is going through some stuff right now. It would be real easy to throw my hands up in the air and say, you know, I got to be here entirely for her and I got to give up on myself for a little while because that's more important to me. But that's not helping her in the long run. No, no, no. I've got to teach her no matter what's going on in life, Travis got to take care of Travis. Then I can take care of other things. So, Nelly, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you can find your why. You can find your purpose. You know, if anything, go to the scripture. God said it is your reasonable service to take care of your temple. It's just a reasonable service. What we're asking of ourselves here and asking of one another here is not unreasonable. It is very reasonable to ask one to take care of their temple. There was a kid in the Bible, a young person, best I remember, a young man. He'd get by the fire and he would all throw himself in the fire. Does that sound familiar to anybody? We tend uh, to hurt ourselves. The Bible says that he was a crazy man, a wild man, a messed up man, a lunatic man. And he would get near the fire and throw himself in it. Why do we keep doing that with food? It's like death by a thousand cuts, isn't it? We just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. Like we don't have a sound mind. We've got to rebuild our purpose and rebuild our walk with Jesus and rebuild our why. And then we can be successful because we'll have the enthusiasm and inspiration to do what we're supposed to be doing. But we got to spend time in that word. We got to spend time repeating the mantras, I am loving awareness. Yours may be something else, but you got to do that. Miss Nelly, I'm going to be praying for you. I hope that the Holy Spirit will give you some unction to take care of yourself in 2022, to love yourself enough to be a disciplined person. I pray right now with you and believe right now with you that the Holy Spirit is going to set you on fire. Now, y'all, I'm not talking to Nelly. I'm talking to all y'all. Please don't be like I used to be. Don't require desperation to get started. Don't require desperation, bad A1C, terrible inflammation in the body, body's breaking down because you're so overweight, sleep apnea, diabetes. Don't Please don't get started with, with your new lifestyle because of desperation. Please get started because of inspiration, because you want to give everything to Jesus because Jesus has given everything to you. It's so easy to do this. See, if I was trying to charge everyone here to do something insane every day, like, you know, the only thing you could do, you had to eat celery. You had to eat celery all day. Celery and water was all you could have from now on. You had to get 200,000 steps in a week. You had to get uh, 10,000 exercise repetitions. It, you know, if I was giving some insane, all I'm asking you to do is eat great tasting food breakfast for the father lunch for the son dinner for the holy spirit so can, can somebody explain to old travis jack can somebody explain to me right now what's so hard about this thing can somebody explain to me right now what is so hard can you really can you really in your pure mind you know that spiritual mind in your pure mind can you really come up with a reason not to do this this shouldn't be easy i would be able to come on here and just celebrate weight loss numbers every class because it's so much fun and we're doing what we're supposed to do. Great tasting food. I've already had, I've already broke my fast for today after a walk with the Lord and had some great scrambled eggs and bacon. I mean, come on, what is so hard? Why are we so excited about self-destruction? Y'all help me out now. I, I'm just your fellow servant. Maybe I'm wrong. 
why are we so why are we so excited about self destruction? I believe that's what Jesus. I believe I'm channeling Jesus through the Holy Spirit right now. What's so exciting about self destruction? I don't like that. I don't like pain. Some of us are hanging on to pain because that's all we've ever known. Whoo! Can I get an amen on that? Some of us are hanging on to pain because we've never really known what it's like to live with the full joy of our salvation and to live with pleasure. Come on. Come on, take a walk on the wild side with me. I promise it's a lot better. I'm going to be praying for you, Nelly. I cannot see the question on Facebook. Yeah, I can't see it, Joni. Can you uh, ask me here? If you don't mind, I'll look for it, Joni, if you don't mind posting it here. Any other questions today? We've got several weight loss challenges going on. Great stuff going on. Angela, I have a question about the MNS Delta packets I ordered last week. They came in and I started them today. Do I also need the Megaplex daily with them or is it included? I have both. A Megaplex is already in, it, in MNS. I would put my Megaplex up. And then once you go through the 14-day uh, metabolic nutrition system, then you could go back to Megaplex. Coreplex, excuse me. Coreplex and Omegaplex are already in the MNS system. Good question. Also, I only do two eating episodes a day, noon and four. You sound like me, except for mine's like noon and 5.30. I'm trying to start eating before sunset. I don't get it in quite as early as you. Good job. What would be appropriate to take the two packets? I took pack one today on an empty stomach before my first meal. And then I take pack two with my largest meal of the day, which will be a, my, uh, my 5.30-ish meal. I want my, my vitamins and minerals and omega oils with my first meal of the day. I mean, excuse me, with my largest meal of the day, which is usually my 5.30-ish meal. Uh, and then I usually take packet one, which gives you the energy boost and the metabolic boost. I take it on an empty stomach right before I go work out. That's how I do it. You could take it 15 to 30 minutes before your first eating episode. Got a private question. I'm back and starting over. Where do I need to start? The detox sounds new. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to have you. So the right now we're doing a detox and we're doing a walking challenge and the 21 challenge. Uh, that 21 challenge, the results, I've seen people losing 20 pounds in 21 days. Have y'all seen those results? That's crazy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's good stuff. Tonight, I'm doing an informational meeting where I'll take a group of 20 uh, through 24 days. I will be going live with that group. It's, it's really a controlled, a very controlled 24 days. It's semi-controlled. I'm going I'm to have as much, try to have as much control uh, in that situation with that group, keeping everybody on the same page for 24 days as a man can. So we'll have an informational tonight at 8 p.m. about that 24-day challenge. But uh, for, that, for the person that's asking, I think wanting to stay private here, uh, asking about where do I get restarted, I would restart with the fast track. I would go through the fast track system. That's, so, that's more important than anything else we're doing if you haven't been through fast track. I'd go through fast track and I'd earn that fast track badge. So if you log in and you go to your dashboard, fast track dashboard, you'll see the lap system. You go through the lap system, you earn that fast track badge. And now we can be assured that you've got a good understanding of our foundational system. That will make all the challenges be more meaningful. After all, you don't have to rush this. You don't have to rush this because the, the truth that a lot of folks feel is that I think it's a positive thing. A lot of people think, feel it's a negative thing. You're going to be doing this the rest of your life. Why would I not want to? If I find some way of eating and living that I enjoy that produces helpful results of mind, body, and spirit, why would I not continue it? A lot of people are like, I don't want to do this forever. Then you got an uphill battle because as soon as you quit, whatever you were doing that yielded some success, whenever you quit, 
you're going to snap back. You're going to go right back to where you were. So we got to be doing this forever. We'll always be running challenges until God brings, comes and gets all of his children. We're going to be doing this until for, for as long as there's an internet, right? Even past my expiration date, as long as there's an internet, there's going to be a Shibboleth, I hope and pray. So you're going to be doing this forevermore until God calls you home and you get that new body. So let's do things right. A thing that begins right will end right. So let's earn that fast track match. Don't forget we have one-on-one -on -one mentoring too. All you got to do is reach out info at myshibboleth.com. They'll get you hooked up with a one-on-one -on -one and a meal plan. Brenda, I have a praise. I used to talk to my sweet daughter about weight loss. I realized that God can only change her, so I quit talking to her about it and set an example. Now she's doing shibby on her own. She's been a member, but just hadn't started until now. Great job. Good to hear. Way to go, Brenda. Way to set a good example. Greta says it is hard to change directions, developing a new normal with food or whatever to become healthier, healthier is so much better than staying with a normal that puts us in an unhealthy state spiritually, physically, and mentally. Amen. And it takes a, an uncommon person who knows the Lord to change. We'll need the help of the Lord to change because we've developed these uh, habits and compulsions. And, and once we're aware that these habits and compulsions are are, are causing us more pain, we can then make a shift. And then it will take a little time and a little conscious effort, and it can be tiring. You see, anything that we have to, to use our new brain with, uh, our main consciousness, right? Anything that we have to be consciously involved with because it hasn't seeped yet down into our subconscious, it's difficult. My old eating habits, my bad eating habits, I spent years of ingraining them into my subconscious. And things that are ingrained in your subconscious, they cause you just to, it's like driving a car. Uh, those of you that have been driving a car a long time, you get from point A to B probably without even thinking about it. When you first started learning to drive, it caused anxiety because it was new and you were having to consciously be alert. So when we start a new lifestyle, it can be a little tiring in the beginning because we're having to work so hard to be mindful about what we're eating. Yeah, does that make sense? So, But that takes time. And then after a while, just like with me, it becomes second nature. It would be as hard for me to go back to my old eating habits as it is for some people now to start new eating habits, new good eating habits. because. I've ingrained them into my subconscious. I don't know any other way to eat anymore. If you stick with it long enough, that phenomenon will happen to you too. Any other questions? And you'll need class attendance. You'll need support. You'll need care. If you can't make the classes, we have one-on-one. -on -one. There's no reasonable excuse and anyone can come up. You can't say the program's too expensive. Uh, it's, it's almost free. It's, it's almost free. Um, it's uh, practical in that everything you need comes from your local grocery store. You can do it. You can have it. You can do, be a vegan. You can be a carnivore. You can do both. It doesn't matter. You can eat clean. You can eat stuff that's in the inner aisles of your grocery store that aren't completely clean. Shibboleth has got the answers, but we've got to be willing to be to to start developing that new brain that says, I want to live a, a healthier, leaner life in Jesus. How many years have I done this? I've been doing this for, I've uh, been helping people do it since 2003. I've been doing it myself since 2000. I've been eating this way since 2000. I started teaching in 2003. Anybody else? I see some questions now. Are you guys going to talk about the right way to use snacks and extras? Yeah, Kim wants me. Kim has gotten on to me about I need to talk about. She's like on everybody. I love it. We need that person that stays on everybody. And, we, you know, we have a tendency for people to um, push the boundaries. And Kim's been after me about 
uh, addressing that here in our Lunch and Learn. So I'll, I'll do my best with that. And Kim, I'm glad you reminded me because I know you as someone who looks at journals, uh, you see just how much people are pushing, pushing the boundaries. So let's talk for just a minute and clear this up. Let's clear the air on this one about snacks and freebies. Now, Kim and I probably be a little different in our philosophies about them because I believe what people will do is better than what people won't do. There are many versions of Shibboleth that are right. There's very restrictive versions, and then there's less restrictive versions that still work. Those less restrictive versions, we begin to push the boundaries if we're not careful. Are y'all with me so far? You know where I'm headed with this? We give things labels. Uh, you know, we've got the label of a meal, right? So during the day, I'm going to be eating what I would call or refer to as a meal on Shibboleth or a snack on Shibboleth or a freebie on Shibboleth. And I'll just put, because they're one in the same almost, I'll put extra right here. So you've got a meal, a snack, a freebie, and an extra. Is everybody familiar what, with what those terms mean at Shibboleth? Because they're different. If we're not talking Shibboleth, those terms mean something totally different to other people. So we've got a meal, we've got snacks on Shibboleth, and we've got freebies and extras. What do these have in common if you're following Shibboleth? Well, they control the BS. What do I mean by controlling the BS? Yeah, we're going to, our meals and snacks and freebies and extras are going to control the BS. And then our lifestyle, our daily disciplines. What are our daily disciplines, everyone, that we live by here if we're a Shibolithian? What are our daily disciplines? Make sure y'all know them. I know them. I want to make sure y'all know them. They're very powerful daily disciplines. Water. Journal, combinations, food combinations, portions, timing, and then bless the name of the Lord. All right. So we got water, journal, combinations to control blood sugar and control insulin, portion control, and timing. We have to follow this because we're trying to create an environment that allows us to preserve muscle and burn body fat, okay? And rapidly too, rapidly and healthfully. So if I live these daily disciplines today, I'm going to be controlling my blood sugar, ending my day in a calorie deficit and losing the body fat. You've got to control insulin and you've got to end your days and weeks in a calorie deficit. Is everybody with me so far? After two perfect days of following all these rules, then I can rest assured that I'm in a calorie deficit, I'm controlling insulin, boom. So what Kim's talking about is we tell people that the best way to go forward with Shibboleth in a moderately is a moderately strict version, not the strictest version, not the most liberal version, but a moderately strict approach that works for everyone is that we would have three, we call these eating episodes, by the way. These are eating episodes. This is an episode by which I ate and I'm qualifying it as a meal snack or freebie. And we say for best results, most clients ought to have three what per day? Rhetorical questions, y'all know the answers, but I want you to, when you type them or write them, you remember them. We want to have three, for best results, three approved meals each day. Okay. Now, when we have an approved meal, we can put a condiment on that meal that's approved, that still allows that meal to control the blood sugar that, that it would normally, or the insulin it would normally provoke. So we're using approved condiments on that meal sometimes to make it taste better. 
So I'm going to have breakfast for the father. That meal may or may not come with a condiment. I'm best off if I, I use zero calorie condiments, but there are some other condiments that have some calories in there. We want to use them sparingly, right? Use them very sparingly. Go through fast track and you'll hear about the five, two and few rule. So we use condiments sparingly. I'm using a little mustard, a little ketchup, a little calorie-free Walden Farms, anything to make my meal taste better. My meal is properly combined and it's on my portion control plate or it fits under my hands, right? Now, sometimes we will have what's called a meal replacement. Somebody give me an example of not a combined whole food combination meal, but a meal replacement. I'm, a, I'm in a hurry. I'm on the go and I got, I go, I'm going to get my meal in, but it's a, it's a meal replacement, mighty muffin. Perfect. So in this meal episode that we're talking about, and I think this is what Kim's referring to. I've been busy as a bee. I think this is what she's referring to. So someone might, they might select a mighty muffin because they're in a hurry and they don't have time to cook. They don't have time to prepare their eggs and their pancakes the right way. So they just have a mighty muffin. And then what she'll see or what some of our mentors will see is you're having a mighty muffin. That ought to be enough, but you're adding a condiment or an extra to that mighty muffin when it's not necessary. Every extra calorie that you consume, even the ones allowed, aren't going to be coming out of stored fat. Are y'all with me? Like a Quest protein bar, Greta says Quest, a Quest bar. We'll see people sometimes, they'll also add a cup of milk, approved milk to that Quest bar. So now they've microwaved them a chocolate chip Quest bar and they're having eight ounces of fat-free fair life milk. So they took a meal replacement and they added a category one. It's not that they can't do that, but is that going to slow the results when we added something that was unnecessary to the meal? Yes. So we want to be careful with that. The other thing that we see a lot is that people will have three meals. They'll have a snack and they'll have several freebies and extras during the day. So they've had their three meals. So first of all, there's 24 hours in a day. On average, people are sleeping seven of those hours, six or seven hours. So that leaves 17 hours in a day. There's 17 hours left in the day. And people are pushing the boundaries. They can have three. Can you have three meal snacks and freebies? Can you have three meal snacks and freebies on Shibola? Is that approved? If, if the foods you put in your mouth are approved, can you have three meals, a snack, and freebies? Yeah, yeah, but the only way you're going to lose very much weight or not get frustrated with slow weight loss is if, you, if you're carrying around 100 extra pounds, right? So this can be done, but is it, it's lawful, but is it expedient? No, most days we don't want to do this. The only time we should go above three eating episodes is when we're having a moment of mental weakness for example, I'm, I've had my three eating episodes. I'm on the couch, uh, which rarely happens, but on the couch watching TV, and, and I'm anxious. I've had a stressful day, and I'm bored. Rather than dive in for the Oreos, I might go get me an, an extra. You know, I might get me a, uh, have me a Mighty Muffin, take half of it, and then put a little peanut butter with it or some sugar-free chocolate chips. And I'm having something that's a lesser evil that controls insulin before bedtime rather than really just going and having a full-on holiday. But that, even though it's lawful, it's not expedient if I want to stay excited about really good weight loss. Is that making sense? We want to work. I don't know why we think we've got to eat and graze all day long. I don't know why. I never feel good when I do that. That's why I rarely do that anymore. I could have all these opportunities to eat through the day and the culture is trying to tell me I need to be eating and grazing all day, but it's killing us. It's killing you. No, we only want to incorporate more than three eating episodes when we're having a moment of mental weakness and it's not time to use our holiday. Can I get an amen on that? Extras. 
people eating grazing all day on extras, grazing on freebies. You might can fit it within the system, but what Kim's saying is she's worried about people who are pushing the boundaries and they ask questions. How can I have more? How can I get more? See, this isn't that your body is needing it. Your body's not needing the sustenance. You've already had your sustenance. It's that your mind is craving it because of those past compulsions. We've got hand mouth disease. And to break a habit, we got to stop it long enough. We've got to fast long enough from it. Fasting's not just food. I had to fast from saying wordy dirt. I had I got I got where I was taught I was saying mild wordy dirts all the time. I had to fast from that. It took some effort. I had to fast from it to be able to quit it. You're going to have to be strong enough in the Lord to have some days where you only have three or less eating episodes a day to break the habit of grazing. All this grazing that we allow is only for those moments of mental weakness so that you don't give up. Those days, you're not going to lose much weight, but you didn't lose the battle. You didn't give up any ground. It's like hunting in football. Does that make sense? When I have more than three eating episodes, that day it's like I'm punting. I didn't score a touchdown. I didn't score a field goal. I punted. I didn't want to lose any ground. Does that make sense? Do I have any football fans that get my analogy there? We want to work hard toward eating three or less eating episodes a day. Now, it doesn't matter to me then at that point if it's three meals, if it's two snacks and one meal, if it's two meals and one snack, uh, two meals and freebies, it doesn't matter. But I want us to work toward three eating episodes and remembering less is best. Just because I can have it doesn't mean that I should have it. I hope that helps because I've seen folks get so frustrated. Yes, I'm only losing a half pound a week. I'm so frustrated. But they're eating three eating episodes a day, three meals a day. Then they're adding on a snack a day. Then they're grazing on extras all day. And they're wondering why they're not losing very much weight. It'll take, it'll take strong character. But that's what life is about is building character, isn't it? God celebrates our weakness. It's only through our weakness that God can manifest God's strength. So embrace that your weakness is your glory, and this is going to take some work and effort. You ain't going to have it made here. You're not in heaven yet. We're here to exercise faith and to conform to the image of Christ. And part of Christ's character was a self-disciplined individual, and we're all working on that one day at a time. In the days we slip and fall, there is grace. So Charles, don't stay gone for a year this time. You're going to slip, and then you just, you just smile about it. You don't beat yourself up. You go, Jesus, I slipped. I'm going to try harder tomorrow. I'm going to do better tomorrow in the Lord. I know you love me still, Lord. That's the attitude that helps us be successful. Uh, Kim is saying extras shouldn't be added to meals. See, added to meals, that's a catchy one. Uh, that's tricky, right? Because I can't say that, because they can be, you see. Extras can be added because snacks, freebies, and extras, they don't, they don't, we don't have to apply a timing scenario to them. So if I'm having a meal and then I still feel that I need more, it's like punting the ball, though. I can have extras, but you shouldn't. It's lawful, but it's not expedient. If you want to be dropping one to three pounds of body fat a week, do you see where I'm going with that, Kim? So I don't, even though your advice to them is spot on, I don't want to tell them they can't do it because there are those days, even if I'm wrong, I believe this. There are those days in my journey that I didn't want to have a holiday and I was having a moment of mental weakness and a void replacement saved my day. Does that make sense, y'all? I think Kim's right. I don't want to get in a debate with Kim. She's smarter on some of this stuff than I am. But do y'all see Kim's right? She's telling you this is what's expedient if you want to be successful. Quit adding extras to meals. 
Quit adding, quit eating snacks right after your meals. Quit having more than three eating episodes. She's spot on. But in my long journey, and I, I know I'm not bragging, but I might be more disciplined than some. I think everybody can have the self-discipline I do if they desire it from the Lord because I was once upon a time not disciplined at all in mind or body. But in my journey, there's been those days where I knew that my physical body wasn't hungry, but either my heart was hurting, I was stressed and anxious, I didn't want to have liquor, I, I didn't want to do drugs, so I feel I had that void. I have my meal, and I'm like, you know, I'm satisfied, but I just want something else for my mind. It's been a long, tough day. Those days, I didn't make any forward progress. I punted the ball. I didn't score a touchdown. I didn't get a field goal, but I saved my day. And now it's not going to take me two days to get back in EFB. And even though I had a little too many episodes today, if God gives me tomorrow, I can tighten up. It didn't cost me a lot of time. I, I hope that makes sense. But she's right. It, you better with three clean eating episodes and zero calorie condiments, no extras, no freebies. I just know so many people that I, I, I'm afraid I lose them. Because they sometimes while they're learning this thing, they just need that little bit of extra to get them through. And it, it saddens me too. Uh, that we lose the, the effort that we're putting in today, it would have yielded us a result tomorrow. But, you know, instead we had to go and have extras with our meal. That got us in a little bit of trouble. We upped the calories a little bit, but we can get back on track. Sometimes it's about not giving up any ground. Pam says, when I first began Shibboleth, I had my three meals and a snack, my freebies, and gradually I would cut out, would cut things out, kept me perfect. Yes, yes. Let me read Kim's comments because she's a great teacher. Let's see. Okay, then I'm wrong. I don't think you're wrong. Uh, she says, some are adding that fatty cheese dip on top of their meals regularly, not because they're still hungry, but because they love that stuff. Exactly. And and, and that's where your advice is spot on. In fact, uh, you are right. You are giving them expedient advice. But some are manipulating the system, and it still falls within a perfect day technically. And if they're putting on, if you know, if they're using two tablespoons of cheese dip, I think you told me the other day, they're not using two tablespoons. They're using a whole half a cup. They're just slathering that stuff on every meal. They should know better. They should know better. We teach, you teach them better than that, and I teach them better than that, Kim. I think you're right. I just wanted to clarify, you know, how people can manipulate the system if, if they want slower results. Kim says, to me, on a meal, that should be used as condiment, except for the rare occasion you're at the Mexican restaurant uh, and want to have it with raw veggies as an extra. Yeah, I'd, I'd be careful with it for sure. I mean, every... They, they, need to, they need to know the information. Um, we don't want to treat you guys, because I wouldn't want to be treated like a child. I don't want to treat like a child. I want to tell you, if you do this, if you do what Kim's saying, you're going to get better results. If you just have your three eating episodes and they're clean, you're going to get better results. But now, if y'all want to push the boundaries, you're a grown person, and I know you're going to fuss at me when you don't get the results you want. But in your, in your heart and in your conscience, you know, you know, he told me, Kim told me, Travis told me, but I pushed the boundaries anyway. And what happens to our little mentors, they're giving good advice, and then people say, it ain't working. And it's like, well, no wonder. I just looked at your journal. You just bathed yourself in cheese dip, sis. <laughs> That's what Kim's really saying. She's being jacked for me, so I don't have to be. <laughs> Anybody else? Great job, Kim. Great job. Yes, Kim says we have to accept the consequences of our decisions. And too often, they don't. They put them on you or they put them on Joni or they put them on me. Uh, but we've got broad shoulders. We can take it. We just have to remind them, no, I didn't eat the cheese dip. You did. <laughs> Greta says, so you're basically saying we have to decide whether we want fast results or slower results. And on that choice, yes. 
I personally have to purpose to be conscious of what happens with my sugar. The health medical issues help me focus. Amen. We're all grown folks here, and some of us aren't acting like it, but we are all grown folks. The days that I have more than three eating episodes, I know that on that day, I'm not producing very much results, not at my size anymore. When I was over 300 pounds, yes, that's the danger. If you're starting with a lot of weight to lose, you'll get away with things that I can't get away with, and you'll develop bad habits. So I would go on no matter what size one is and eat for the size they want to be and how they're going to have to eat for the rest of their life. So we're developing good habits straight away. Charles says, I had times where I knew I was doing what I was supposed to and not lose, then all of a sudden drop 10 pounds. That is the way it works. Your body's a big old sponge and it ain't just sponging up extra calories. It's sponging up water and glucose and it's like the tide coming in and out. And if we'll be patient, which is in a strong suit of the world today, uh, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep preaching to y'all. You know, the Bible says that the fruit of the spirit, one of them is patience. If you don't have patience, then you're acting like a bad tree. A bad tree shouldn't produce both good fruit and bad fruit. We do, but we shouldn't. So your tree may need a pruning if you can't live, you can't be patient. You're the one that did this to yourself, just like I did it to myself. And I had to take ownership of it and have a good attitude and change. And every one of us here, if we want results, that's what we're going to have to do. Ain't no quick fix coming. Ain't no miracle pill coming. Ain't nothing coming that's going to do more help than, than harm. Anything that science and man comes up with where one does not have to have self-discipline is going to have terrible ramifications in the future that is a fact so you can decide do and it's done with a good attitude or you can just keep whining and you can act like someone who's not a child of god you are a child of god but you can keep acting like a heathen if you want to <laughs> i'm talking i'm preaching to the choir Nicole says, I know if we eat approved foods, the calories, protein, all that takes care of itself, but you recommend a protein amount per day for women? I, I do. I, I do recommend that if somebody likes to count their macronutrients, that if your goal is to preserve muscle and lose fat, you need a half a gram of protein per day for the size that you want to be. So, for example, I wanted to be 200 pounds. I would need 100 grams of protein a day. If I had a female here that's trying to lose weight and preserve muscle, it's different if you're trying to build muscle. Uh, but if you're trying to preserve muscle and lose body fat, then we want a half a gram of protein per day per pound that you want to be. So if you're a female and want to be, say, 140 pounds, how many grams of protein would I need a day, everyone, for muscle preservation uh, and, and fat loss? That's right, Nicole, 70. That's what we're shooting for. Think of your macronutrients instead of being overwhelmed with keeping up with the numbers. You don't need one more thing to be overwhelmed with. Think of it like a dartboard. The bullseye for someone that wanted to be 140 pounds would be 70 grams of protein. As long as I'm getting close to that every day, I'm okay. I don't have to hit the bullseye. It's a try for thing with Shibboleth. Anybody else? Any other questions? Greta says it's better to start out like we can hold out. I appreciate all the staff. God bless you, Greta. We appreciate you too. Any parting questions or comments? Don't forget tonight we've got the informational meeting. Now, this one's not going to be for everybody. It, it's going There's some food and supplement cost to it. It's a control group, and I'm going to be spending a lot of time. I would value what we're about to put into that control group at $1,000. It's probably going to cost somebody with food and supplement cost around $300. I expect the weight loss to be pronounced and profound uh, and especially the behavior, behavioral changes. Uh, but if you can't afford to do that with me, because it's going to cost you, you already got food cost anyway. You're just going to be redirecting your food cost towards some healthy foods. And then I'm going to go live with you Monday through Thursday uh, and try to keep you going in the right direction during the 24 days. Uh, but if you can't afford that, hey, don't forget, there's the free 21-day challenge. There's the 
uh, free detox. Uh, there's the free walking challenge. There's plenty of places to go and participate with others other than the 24 day uh, group challenge. We're gonna begin a group together and they're gonna graduate together and they're gonna pick up a vast amount of knowledge over the 24 days and they're gonna lose a lot of weight. So that informational meeting is tonight at 8 p.m. I love walking, Pam, I do. I'm glad I could get back at it. As you know, uh, I think you and I both have dealt with some crises and injuries over the last couple of years. I ruptured my Achilles and uh, it's been a while since I could walk like I used to walk with everybody, but I'm back at it and walking and I appreciate y'all setting a pace and inspiring me to do good. And I love walking in spirit with y'all too. It means a lot to me. Uh, for tonight's session, let me give you that real quick while I'm here. Hang tight and I'll give you that, uh, that link. All right, I'm putting it in there now for you. This is the informational link. It's just informational tonight. You will not have to, it starts February the 1st. It starts February the 1st, uh, but you can register here and jump on board with us tonight. I'll be giving food list out, uh, supplement recommendations. Um, I'm asking all of the group to be doing the same thing. Uh, we've got those other groups where like some will do the detox kits, others won't, but I want to monitor blood pressure, a one as much as we can. Some people won't want to go get their A1C check, but I want everybody to be eating the same stuff and taking the same supplement so we can get the, a good result. And then we can show forth to, uh, in an anonymous way, show physicians and other people just how effective food combining, walking, and good nutrition is. It's amazing to me that we're dealing with this obesity epidemic uh, and all these health care crises when really all we need to be doing as a nation is promoting self-discipline and whole food combining. But we, we've given ourselves over just like they did in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We've given ourselves, uh, we, we're born again. I, I believe that. When Christ said it was finished, it's on the cross, it's finished. But, you know, we're still dealing with the aftermath. And uh, as a country, uh, United States as a country, I think we, our best days are in front of us as a people as a household of faith, but the United States as a country has gone the way of uh, overindulgence and have turned their back on, on their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So hopefully they'll turn back to Christ if they get in enough pain and in enough desperation. I wish we could, we could utilize, in, I've, I have had to use desperation to change my life. The desperation uh, never lasted long. It's been the inspiration that has kept me going this time for so long and trying to live and eat unto Jesus. So I hope some people will join me. That's my mission every day to get people to join me and let's turn our hearts and our minds and our eating behaviors back over to Jesus. Thank you, Nellie. Thank you, everybody. We love y'all so much and I hope to see some of you tonight. Don't hesitate to reach out to one of our great mentors if you need help because that, that's that's our focus every day is helping our brothers and sisters in Christ feel better, have more self-confidence, more self-esteem. We love y'all. We'll see you tonight. Thanks for coming to the Lunch and Learn. We'll have another Lunch and Learn tomorrow.